Hi, my name is Vic Veer. I'm an ENT consultant that works in the NHS. Now this video is a follow-on from the previous video I did about anosmia or loss of sense of smell. Some of you may know I lost my sense of smell after I got COVID a few weeks ago and I put out a video which uh, according to my wife wasn't very good and so she's asked me to do another one. This time really focus on what you should be doing to get your sense of smell back again. So in this video what I'm going to tell you is what the evidence says that could work in terms of helping people with anosmia or regaining your sense of smell. I'll tell you what the experts say you should do and also I've put my own little twists and modification on some of these things so I'll tell you what I'm doing as well on top of this. So I think the first thing you should be doing is trying to clear out your nose and make sure you can actually smell something. There's no point sniffing around and trying to get your sense of smell back if your nose is blocked and you can't smell anything anyway. So I think it'd be quite prudent to try and clear out your nose with something like Sterimar which in effect is just French seawater. I don't think it's any better than any other kind of seawater. Atlantic, Pacific, North Sea, doesn't really matter, but this one's readily available in most pharmacies. And all you do is you spray it up your nose a couple of times on each side, sniff it up, and it just opens up your nose slightly and clears out some of the mucus and other things that could be blocking your nose. Now, I'm also using fluticasone propionate nasal spray. It's otherwise known as Pyrenase or Flixinase. One of the constituents of Demista is also fluticasone propionate. Now, this is a steroid nasal spray, and I use it for rhinitis and some hay fever. If you're thinking about using these steroid sprays to open up your nose even more, I would speak to a doctor first because there are some side effects and there's some things that you should think about before using sprays. But generally you can get these sprays over the counter without too much trouble. Using the salt water spray to clear out your nose and a steroid spray if necessary to keep your nose as open as possible gives you the best possible chance to be able to smell anything. So now we move on to step two. Omega-3 supplementation is a pill that you can take. Now, um, I've left descriptions for all of these things on the video description below. Now, I'm using omega-3 for my anosmia because I think there is some research that says that it works. So there have been studies that show that mice which have very low omega-3 levels in their body have problems with their sense of smell. And when those mice were given omega-3, their sense of smell returned. We also know from large studies that older adults that don't take an awful lot of omega-3 have a higher chance of having a nasal problem or a nasal sort of olfactory problem. There was also study that showed that uh, people who are having operations around that nerve up here afterwards a lot of these people have problems with their sense of smell but in this trial it showed that if you were to take omega-3 the chance of recovery of your sense of smell was improved when you took this pill. Now I believe there is an ongoing trial at the moment that's testing to see if omega-3 does help people with COVID related anosmia but in the meantime I'm just going to take it hopefully it will help me. Now step three, we're going on to vitamin A nasal drops. There was a trial in 2017 where they found people who had uh, infections which caused the nosmia. They gave 124 people intranasal vitamin A drops in the sort of head down position there to put the drops in and hold it in their nose as long as possible. I don't think this is a good idea because it'll just drip down the back of the throat. I think what you meant to do is put your head right upside down and fill up your nose this way so it sits at the top here, get to that nerve area. Anyway, I digress. They got 124 patients, they gave them these vitamin A drops, 10,000 units, a drop in each nostril, and they kept on going for eight weeks. And then they compared that to people who just use olfactory training, which I'll come to in a minute. And they found at the end that 37% of people who did use the vitamin A had improvement in their sense of smell, compared to 23% of the people who didn't use it and just use olfactory training. And from what I can tell, vitamin A drop seems relatively safe. So I've added that onto the list of things that you should try as well. All of these drops and medications can be found in the video description below. But moving on to step four now. Now, there are an awful lot of papers out there that I found that suggest that zinc, B-complex vitamins, uh, vitamin D, all those sorts of things seem to help people with an anosmia. To be honest, the, the papers I saw weren't particularly clear and I wasn't really sure if this was true or not. But I figured to myself, well, vitamin tablets aren't particularly bad for you and there's very little harm. So just getting a simple A to Z vitamin tablet will be fine, I think. And if it has even a minor role, it might be helpful in your situation. So now we're on to step five. This is olfactory training. Now I'm moving away from the drops and sprays and things like that. And I have sort of covered this in my first video, but like I said, I'm going to tell you what the experts say and how you should be doing it. And then I'll tell you how I've messed around with it and modified it to my own ends. Now, as I said, the experts like Claire Hopkins, uh, Simon Gain, uh, Fifth Sense, uh, Absence Charities, all those things will say to you, you should try to smell about four things every day the four classic things are rose, lemon, eucalyptus, and cloves. And they say you should smell each of these 
for about 10 to 20 seconds each time, about once or twice a day, preferably twice a day. Now, the reason why they chose these four things is because they uh, represent different types of smells. And I didn't really understand this initially. So rose is a floral scent, lemon is a fruity scent, uh, eucalyptus is a resinous scent and clothes are a spicy scent. Now the idea behind this is that you're getting training in all these different sort of uh, domains of smell and you should continue training yourself in these for at least three months before you try and seek other sort of help. Now it can be quite difficult to do smell training and there are a few things that you should do to try and avoid confusion when you're doing your sense of smell training. So point one is that you shouldn't take very very deep sniffs like a uh, just do a very tiny sniff, so so tiny that you can't really hear it yourself, like that. I'm not sure if you can hear it through the microphone, but just so lightly that you can't really hear it yourself. The idea behind this is that if you take too deep a breath or too deep a sniff, you're sort of activating all the other sort of uh, taste fibers and all the other uh, nerves that are going on in the back of your throat. And that would confuse the matter. What you're trying to do is train your nose rather than all the other nerves going on. And to be honest, also, if you sniff too deeply, you also get a headache. Although you can't smell anything, you're sniffing away, you can't smell anything. If you do it too much and sniff too much, you end up giving yourself a headache, almost like your brain can smell it, but, but you can't. And it's a bit like when you walk into the ground floor of Selfridges, you're like, oh God, there's so many perfumes everywhere. And you, you head down the stairs or wherever, wherever the computer area is and let the wives just do their thing on the first floor. Now, point two is that you should try and leave a bit of time between smelling two different things. This is to give yourself a bit of time so you don't get confused between the two different scents. Again, this causes confusion. It just helps to make it clear for your brain what sort of smell you're trying to smell. Now, if you're going to do olfactory training properly, point three would be to try and use essential oils like I bought this one. Um, and it's basically a whole bunch of different smells you can use to sniff. Now, the idea behind that is that you get an almost like a standard smell, a standard dose each time, rather than getting a different apple, which may smell different to the one you tried before. Uh, and it gives you a standard dose uh, a set sort of concentration and also if you've got bananas or something like that eventually it'll go rotten so you can't really do that whereas uh, essential oils don't really go rotten so you can just keep using it and the last point point four is that if you can't smell anything at all try really concentrate to try and remember what that smell should be like and that is meant to improve matters and uh, bring back the sort of jog your sense of smell memory back again what I'm going to tell you now is what I've started doing and you know, the modifications I've made. It, just to avoid confusion, if, if you don't want to be listening to what little things I've changed, just uh, skip this video, go over to an oversimplified um, history video or a Mr. Beast video. But um, this is what I'm doing, what I think is useful for me. Now, although they say you should use about four different smells, you can quite easily, and I think a lot of people do say this anyway, you can smell lots of things like, um, as I showed you, this one's got 20 smells in it, but just go around sniffing anything you can. And the more you do that, the more exposure you have, the better I think you've got a chance of getting your sense of smell back. Try and think to yourselves, oh, those four domains, floral, resonance, uh, sorry, resinous, uh, spicy, uh, fruity, all those things. Try and do a range of different types of smells. It is quite useful apparently to build up training for all those different areas of the sort of the scent landscape. So what I figure is that you should be looking at all the different smells that people are going to be expecting you to know. So what I've done is I've left a list of all the uh, smells that, that you can get in the Pennsylvania University Smell of Identification Test. Now these are the English ones rather than the American or Australian ones. They seem to be slightly different for different parts of the world. But I figure if they're testing for these then we should be training for these as well, a bit like revision for an exam. Now I said in the expert advice section that you should leave about 30 seconds to a minute between smells. Now personally I find that very difficult. Uh, when I smell two things even a minute or two apart I seem to get a little bit confused with that. So actually I've started spreading, spreading it out for the whole day rather than just four in the morning and four at night. It seems a bit too much for me. I get a headache and it's uh, not very fun. And it becomes very regimented like oh it's like a chore. So I get grab any opportunity I can to sniff something if I, I think I can remember that smell. And, uh, and I try and do that during the day. I leave this sometimes in my car or something like that. So I have something to smell. I get into the car, I could sn smell something else. Um, I tried even putting a few of these essential oils in, onto my mask. I could smell it all day, but that ended up giving me a headache. But, but you get my idea. Um, I think that you need to leave a bit more time between sniffing these things because I got personally very confused between different smells. Now in the first couple of weeks while I was doing the olfactory training, I was getting really sort of, uh, 
frustrated and upset with myself because some days I could smell everything. I could say, oh, well, this is great. I got all my sense of smell back. But the next day, the day after I'd get worse, I thought, what? what's going on? It was really annoying where some days I could smell, some days I couldn't. Um, and it wasn't because my nose is unblocked because I completely unblocked it and it still wasn't really working. So I'm not sure if anyone else has this sort of variable sort of coming and going of their um, anosmia. But what I found was to not make myself so uh, upset and frustrated is that every time I smelt something, I'd give myself, it's a bit like a research project, I gave myself a score out of 10. Uh, how well can I smell this out of 10? And yes, some days I can't smell anything. And some days, oh, I can smell four out of 10 or six out of 10. And when I added up the scores throughout the whole week, I could see actually, uh, although it doesn't feel like I'm getting much better, the week before I only had uh, 100 or 150 or whatever it was. And this week I've got 160. So I am slowly getting better, although I don't actually feel it. So I have an incredibly boring Excel sheet on my laptop over there. and. Although it may not help everyone, but it did help me to make me feel like, yes, I am making progress. There is light at the end of the tunnel. I am working towards becoming completely normal again. So this diary really doesn't do anything apart from comfort me to make me feel like, yes, I am making progress. And it sort of uh, helps the, the research side of my head to, oh, look, I am improving the day by day. So during this process, I've noticed that some smells don't smell anything like they should do. So once I smelt an orange, that, oh God, that smells like petrol. That doesn't make any sense at all. So I have noticed from time to time that when I smell something and I know what the smell should be like, I sometimes smell something completely different. Um, interestingly, once orange smelt like pe petrol for me and a banana smelt rotten. Now, it didn't make any sense because both of them were, I was definitely not uh, dousing my oranges in petrol and the banana was nice and fresh. So I'm not sure what was going on there. But I was quite worried about going down the parosmia route where everything sort of gets jumbled up. So if I smelt an incorrect smell, what I do is I put that thing away and go and find the smell that I thought I just smelt. So if I smelt petrol, what I do is go and smell some real petrol to tell my brain this is actually what petrol should smell like. And if it smelt rotten, I'd go and sniff a bin or something like that. And, and the idea is to train my brain correctly. So, and the reason for this, because in my mind, I'm thinking of this like a, a switchboard. My brain is desperately trying to reconnect the wires of this nerve back again. And sometimes the wires go to the wrong place and end up in the wrong parts of my brain. I'm not sure this is true, but this is how I imagine it in my brain. Now, if, if an orange is smelling wrong or a banana is smelling wrong, I don't want the brain to start thinking, oh, well, yeah, that's what oranges smell like, or that's what a banana smells like. I want to go and tell the brain, no, no, no you've got that wrong. Because particularly when you smell something rotten, it gives you a, a strong emotional response. And those sorts of strong emotional responses give you um, a very strong memory for that. Uh, everyone remembers where they were at 9-11 or other times in our lives. Those strong emotional things embed memories into our brains. And I don't want to have uh, oh God, that smells horrible, and remember that, I, I, I want to make sure that I correct that smell in my mind. Um, as I said, there's no evidence for this, but it's something that help, seems to help me. And the reason why I'm doing this is because what I'm trying to do is re-educate and reconnect those wires correctly in my brain. It may not be doing anything at all, but it makes me feel like I have some control over this whole process. And now if I feel like I've got some control over this process, I feel a bit more positive. And being positive in this situation is really important because it is very frustrating. It is very annoying and depressing uh, to get the wrong smell out of different things and not enjoying your food. Now, I mentioned in my other video that if I cannot smell anything with this little tiny little sort of tiny sniffs that um, the experts tell us to do, I do take a bigger sniff. I take a really massive sniff just to try and get anything back from it. Um, sometimes if it's something that's edible, I'll eat it as well, just to see if I can get some sort of sensation from it. I know a lot of it will be a sense of taste because I can't smell anything when I sniff it. But the reason why I'm doing that is, is because I think I have a very poor memory when it comes to smells. I can't really remember what it's meant to smell like. What is a clove smell like? I, I can't remember. And when you actually bite down it, I think I can taste a little bit of it or it gives me a memory of it. And that memory jogs my actual memory and that helps me, I think, with my ability to smell that later on. And things are slowly coming back. Um, I guess I'm about 50, 60% of the way there. Now, as I said, the experts say don't do this but um, I think I'm just really impatient in it. And that's the thing that helps me. It gives me a sense of, look, um, okay, I can't smell it like this, but I can smell it if I bite down on the spice or, or something like that. And 
uh, and it's making me po more positive. And I think being positive is really important. As I said before, it's really, all of this is, is a process and it's a long process. And the more you carry on, the more you keep going, the more you're consistent about it, I think the better the results are. Now, I really hope that this video is a little clearer and a little bit more useful than the old video. My wife, she's only just become a subscriber. She's already telling me I'm doing things wrong. So um, I hope it's more useful than the last video. And I hope that your experience and this process and this journey that you're going through uh, is as successful as mine has been because I am getting better and I feel more positive about this. Thank you ever so much for watching and do take care. I look forward to seeing you at the next one.